It's legitimately hot right now, holy mother. It's extremely hot and my AC unit is too loud to run during the video, so I'm doing the video like this. If you've been into the retro scene for a long time on YouTube, there's a lot of things that have changed through the years. A ton of things, whether it's the way collecting's done, how it works, algorithms, or whatnot. But for me, some of the things that I miss the most, yeah, there's different collecting ways, but one of the things that I always go back to and find myself revisiting on YouTube is some older YouTube retro gaming channels that have gone away, that don't exist anymore. Many people have kind of stopped making videos and come back, but today, for the most part, I wanna talk about channels that I dreadfully miss that are gone. They just stop making videos, and to me, they're some of the pioneers, not necessarily starting YouTube, but that really set a good tone and a good feel for the retro gaming community that are no longer around. Let's talk about them. Gaming channels we really miss. Mate, you wanna get in the octagon with me, mate? The first one may be one of the most important ones to me out of all of these, and you've probably heard me talk about them before, but that's the Retro Hunters. They are one of the very first channels, not saying they're the first, but one of the very first channels on YouTube that did video game hunting in a way that was a little bit more professional. I'd say it didn't go as professional as like the game chasers with narrations and stuff like that, but they definitely had a tone set to where it felt a bit more like a show than a lot of people that were just carrying around phones or GoPros or whatnot. The last warrior, but he's breaking through the logo and you can, you see, can see the, the chip chips. Mark. You can see the chips in the back. The thing is though, is that the chips, like an NES game does not look <laughs> yeah, that advanced on the inside. <laughs> this channel was made up of two guys, Rob and Josh, really cool guys, really fun. They did it in a way to where when you watched them, it was a show but it wasn't overly a show, so you definitely felt like you were there with them. I feel like it set off that tone of, hey, I'm going to the SWAT, I mean, I'm going to the flea market with my buddies, just goofing around. Yes, there is a sense of you gotta find the good games. Yes, there is a sense of it's all about the hunt, but at the end of the day, when you watch these episodes, you would realize that, okay, they went through a lot of these days without buying a lot of stuff, really. I wouldn't say they hit the big heavy hitters. They were never really finding the big crazy stuff. Yeah, they did find some good deals, but they never necessarily got anything to where you're like, whoa, that makes them good game hunters. No, it's more watching it, having a good time. When you got done, you're like, Man, that makes the swap meter flea market look fun. I can go there and necessarily not find anything and still enjoy my time. After doing their show for just a little while, they also got partnered with Screw Attack and they kind of got a little bit bigger and bigger. And out of nowhere, at least on the YouTube world, they just kind of disappeared. I myself personally did speak to Rob after he let go of the channel once I started my older channel because he was watching my older channel. And I was like, hey dude, we were chit chatting and I know the reasons why he got off and he made some of them public. But regardless, that's not really what this video is about to say why anybody particularly got off doing YouTube or stopped doing it. But just to say, this video is more of an homage to those people. So Retro Hunters, their videos are still fun. Still go check them out if you love game hunting videos in a way that's just gonna make you smile. This is almost a uh, sweet tooth from Twisted Metal. If you just get a clown, <laughs> put it in there, that'd be so rad. So I followed this channel for a long time amongst many others, and that's Classic Game Room, which is now called like 80s Comics or something like that. But Classic Game Room, I feel like was such a giant in the world of retro video games. Not retro video game collecting, but Mark, I think his name was Mark. But this channel, Classic Game Room, the journey of this show was basically to review everything in existence when it comes to video games. I'm talking every different type of console, controller, accessory, video game. He would have different things sent to his channel if he didn't already have the stuff to take a little sneak peek at it. And what made this channel pretty cool, at least for a guy like me, is this channel was a little different too because it wasn't your typical trying to break a mold or do something really weird or really different. If anything, the reviews were pretty darn basic and really dad jokey too at that. But I think it gave a sense for a lot of us nerds or geek type of people to just be like, hey, we can be quirky and we don't have to have the craziest flashy editing or anything, but we can just sit back and talk about video games and kind of realize that, okay, there's a lot more people out there that love of these games we do, especially when it came to this channel, because again, like I said, if you have a favorite video game or anything really, this channel got around to talking about it at some point. 
Again, when the channel started to kind of go away, I wasn't really following anything on social media with what was going on. But on YouTube, just as far as YouTube goes, there was like art stuff happening and comic stuff happening. And the channel just kind of fizzled away into that. They know they experimented with their own website. Not sure if that's even really such a thing. But as far as YouTube goes, the channel's stopped, halted in its tracks, at least as far as video games goes. And I wish it would come back because there's still more in existence that the channel hasn't talked about yet. So Classic Game Room, you were awesome. When you were out, you were a big staple in the world of retro, and you know that. I think you should just nuke them all from orbit. Even if that's not really in the Disney spirit. Then again, what is the Disney spirit? The Disney spirit is making money by any means necessary. I was about to mention a channel and I YouTubed when their last video was, and I just saw some comments. It was a channel called Retrospective Perspective that I was gonna talk about. And I just saw some comments, and I'm not even gonna talk about it, because, uh, yeah. Figure it out on your own if you need to. I'm not gonna talk about it. The next channel is a channel called SNESMAN16. Oh my gosh, I used to love this dude. One of the first reviewers I would ever watch, and I remember, Snes man is the champion, he is 16 bit. Snes man is the champion, he is 16 bit. I used to love that. This dude, I think his name was Patrick. I met him at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Super nice guy. And his channel was just one of the first ones that I started watching that was like a show reviewer. Yes, you had ABGN and a lot of people were doing these different types of shows when it comes to reviewing. But his is one that just caught on with me because it wasn't overly produced. It reminds you of being you. Remember the first time you dove into the world, if you're a creator of any sort or anything, your first time kind of getting your feet wet, knowing that, okay, I want to do something cool, maybe do some fun intros, do some silly music or whatnot, and everything was like kind of half good and half decent, but you could tell that the effort was there and that you were going for it to make it look good. That's what SNESMAN16 was to me. It was the everyday gamers channel of people who wanted to gush about video games, and you probably watched AVGM and aspire to do something like that, but you just weren't quite there with the flashiness and all the technology and whatnot. And I remember vividly, wow, speaking of me not having my shirt on, I remember me all the time. It's when I moved in with my parents when we were waiting to move into our new house and I would sit out there laying out in the backyard, hanging out with my, my wife and our one kid at the time, Brixton, while just chilling in the backyard, you know, having a soda, while watching SNESMAN16 and just really enjoying it. Uh, SNESMAN16, go check it out if you haven't. It, the channel still exists, it didn't get disappear, like didn't get taken down from YouTube. It's still there, super old classic. You get some nostalgia watching this, for sure. Love that channel, love that dude. I miss content like that, I really do. I really miss when reviewers didn't just chit chat with a webcam and talk and have no cool edits or anything. I love those days of YouTube. Absolutely miss them. Perfect timing, Airplane, thank you. It means a lot, seriously, that you've supported me over this time. And it means a lot that you've kept up with the content and you believed in me. And I believe there are a lot of great people on YouTube who we can continue to support. So thank you so much and goodbye. The next one is a channel that I'm not sure if a lot of people watched or not. I think she has around 70,000 subscribers still. I'm not sure if she had a bunch more during her heyday when she was actually putting out content. But this is one of the first female retro gaming YouTubers I watched and she was very soft-spoken, but super well-spoken as well. She was just so educated in the things that she would talk about. And I remember the first video I saw of hers that really made me like her channel is when she took a Super Nintendo cartridges and she also took Sega Genesis cartridges and she did a video called How Tough Are They? And I remember when I started to watch it, I'm gonna be like, oh, it's like how difficult are these games? Boy, was I wrong. I clicked on the video and this video was all about how tough the actual cartridges were. I remember her dropping them off buildings. I remember her putting them like in boiling water, if I remember correctly. Can they survive the poor lobster's fate? Each game was boiled separately and for 10 minutes each, just long enough to hard boil an egg. While they both bravely faced the scorching hot water for the full 10 minutes, one cartridge clearly sustained less physical damage than the other. 
While the Super Nintendo cartridge came out a bit discolored and a tad out of form, the Genesis cartridge almost completely crumpled on itself. And back then I didn't really know any details about actual physical cartridges besides the fact of just liking to play them and collect them. I didn't know anything about what makes them up or the boards or anything or the pins. And I was shocked on this video. I remember, I remember seeing these things play over and over and over and that's when like 90 year old Riff or Aaron, whatever you want to call me, came into play and I was like, see, in my day games didn't break. And I was always trash talking CD based games and all that. But I absolutely loved her channel. I think that her voice was just an easy voice to listen to. And I know on YouTube that's huge, uh, male or female, it doesn't matter. If you have that voice, there's just some people when they come on with their voice, you're like, that's a voice you like to hear. You feel comfortable with it. It just kind of sits with you and resonates with you. Is that's a voice you want to hear talk. Rin Reed Game Game, she was so cool. And I remember she stopped making videos for a while and then came back for a little bit. And I think she did some like out of this world gameplay, was going to test doing some of that, but just kind of went the way of the willows and disappeared. I think she might have had some kids or something like that. Not exactly sure, but that's another channel I definitely miss in the retro world. I also know that if my house catches on fire, I'm throwing all of my old cartridge games out the window. Hey. Happy gaming! The next channel is going to be uh, two of my favorite dudes to watch on the world. They were a game hunting channel, a really good channel, and out of nowhere they just disappeared. Their name was Retro Liberty. <laughs> So I know this channel technically kinda still exists, kinda yes, kinda no, it did exist, it got sold, it got bought, all the above, but screw attack. No reason to keep us around, and as cool as unique as the Wiimote was when it first came out, it's pretty much useless with some games, like Brawl. And screw attack was the first channel that I watched there was like a big network of dudes just being dudes. Now I know there was other channels like Machinima and others like that, but I think Screw Attack for me, I really resonated with it because when I'd watch it, I would just feel like all these different guys that made up this group, it felt like what I would have felt like if all of my buddies and I decided to be like, hey, let's all jump into this as a business plan. You know, you take this, you take this, you do this, you do this, you do that, and we become kind of our own network. And I feel like Screw Attack did it in a way to when it still felt like just dudes and girls being dudes and girls. No big business being involved, which of course there always is big business being involved once something becomes successful or starts to make money, things change. Whether you like it or not, even regular channels, I hate to say it, which is bittersweet for me that our channel, this channel never like blew up because I don't know. I want to say that I can promise that I wouldn't change, but I'll be honest. You watch so many YouTubers that you know that say, I would never do this and I would never do that. And then they get big and they're doing this and they're doing that and they're promoting this and they're promoting that and it just doesn't feel the same. I hate to say it, even if you're still pure, still awesome, still love the game, it's just not the same. And your audience knows it and we know it and you know it yourself too. And I'm speaking for myself, which is why it's bittersweet, which is kind of off topic, but what I was saying is Screw Attack basically, it didn't necessarily, it had many years where it didn't feel like that. It just felt like, hey, these guys are just having fun, having a good time, and now there's countless networks out there that kind of do this thing. But you know that they're being ran by a bigger entity and it feels that way and it feels a little more professional, which can be a great thing, but there's a level to where when you have to realize we're gamers here, we're known to eat Doritos and, and drink Mountain Dew. Is that our, is that our stereotype still? We're, we like to sit with, with our shirts off and in shorts and just scratching our butts and playing games and burping and farting. That's just what we do. And, and Screw Attack, I feel like, felt like that for a very long time. Now I know they're, I don't know what the, who owns who anymore, but I know Death Battle, they're still doing that, which Death Battle is awesome. But I just love those dudes. Stuttering Craig and crew, very well done. I need to stop. I'm sure they intended him to be a very well-developed character, well-developed character. Oh gosh. Can I take all that back? Last channel that I'm going to mention that I might even get some hate for because for some reason we still live in a world of people who live with the brain like they're nine years old and want to fight with people, other opinions. And I know he's still kind of back, so it's a weird situation, but I, I rate Gamer. But if you thought they were going to put the sequel to Ghosts and Goblins on the NES here, well, nope, we're going to port this game onto the Sega Genesis. 
I used to love his content. I know there was so much back and forth between, hey, he copied AVGN and he copied this and that. And when you really think about YouTube, every channel has copied some channel at some point. Some channels wouldn't exist without copying some other channels. Not saying I justified or whatnot, I'm just pointing that out. But Irate Gamer, I love that style of YouTube. The overly dramatic, the over cheesy jokes. Yes, cheesy, yes, bad jokes necessarily may not be funny, but they always work for me. It just always felt like a special place for me on YouTube with that. I know people liked him, people hated him, then he went and did some other things on his channel, like a podcast and tried some other stuff and ghost stuff and people kind of really started to hate him. Then he came back with Chris Neo and people kind of was still hating him. And I know now he's back fully doing his irate stuff and people seem to be loving it. Myself included, not gonna lie. Total fan of that type of content. It feels like old YouTube but it's still new YouTube. It's brand new YouTube, brand new content, but doesn't necessarily feel like that new YouTube feel where everything's a little overly, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully. But Irate Gamer, he was gone, came back up, down, left, right, B A B A start, and now he's back and I like it, so yeah. I have the power. This. Where the hell was this power up during the first game? When I was thinking about this, I was like, man, what are some other forgotten YouTube channels then with the way of the willow that are just gone? They don't exist anymore. They're, they're not uploading. It's been years. What are those channels that you watched back in the day that just aren't there for you anymore? But when you think back, you're like, man, I miss that channel. I miss those days. Let me know down in the comments below. Make sure to unsubscribe because our channel sucks and you know it. Have a good one.